Hello ladies and gents, DK Truman here for another series X3 versus one move, two pretty solid teams up against each other. Uh, don't know exactly what one move's lineup completely is. I think they're still playing with Smiling Knight, but we can't really check it at the moment. I think for lower, uh, the uh, X3 lineup is probably unchanged. We're actually not 100% sure about that, but uh, again, we'll have to wait until the game starts. Uh, we started off with a tiny for one move into the Broodmother. And Broodmother, of course, we saw it a couple of times yesterday as well. Uh, we do also know that they tend to have a pretty decent offlane uh, brood in their squad. I think his name is... Shergrad? I can't really. Sorry, my, my mind is a little bit blank at the moment. Hoodwink. Okay, that's not a hero you see every single time. Hoodwing Broodmother lane, that means uh, Broodmother, of course, will most of the time be semi-solo. Naga Siren, Brood should be able to survive that, depending on the five position that will be countering out the Brood. Uh, Naga, of course, can farm up spiders pretty easily, and just in general split farm like crazy. Actually kind of interesting, because X3 used to... I don't know if they still have that same safe laner uh, that they used to have. They had one that loved playing in Naga as well, and with the Lesh now banned, which is the uh, ultimate yeah, counter for illusion-based heroes. It's not too bad, but it's very early for a Naga pick. It is radiance uh, banned. Seconds. Five seconds remain. Well, let's see what we got going further down the line. Pudge ban, Pango ban, Mars, and the Marana ban. Marana ban. Because Naga is a pretty nice combo with it. Uh, would be interesting. Because then I guess it would be a Marana 5? Unless they are expecting this to be a tiny safe lane, something along those lines. As uh, Sorry, tiny mid. For one move, because normally Tiny tends to just be a four position, uh, straightforward. Easiest pie. No surprises there. Kind of hero. Radiance turn to back. Maiden. Crystal Maiden. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So you got most likely your five position at the ready, your four position, two. Um, pretty squishy heroes though, so definitely have to be careful against the tiny because he's got the avatars combo that could blow you to smithereens pretty easily. And if they get anything else, because the thing is, Naga can just Song of the Siren walk into the fight and set everything up to just destroy a Hoodwink and Crystal Maiden very easily at the start of an engagement. Dire must choose. Storm, Spirit. Storm Spirit, another hero that can blow up weak supports Silencer. and get a good catch onto the Broodmother going in. Silencer is a little bit of a surprising one. 
I guess the global silence is nice to deal with the Crystal Maiden's ulti, at the very least. And also decent against the Hoodwink to prevent him from shooting his, uh, his Five sharpshooter. Seconds. Does mean that it's probably a silencer 5 with the Naga safe. Tiny 4, and then they still need an offlaner for one move. With Tiny, of course, being a Tiny, maybe get something that is uh, sustainable on its own. Doesn't necessarily have to be the case. You could also just go for a dumpster lane. You are laning against the Crystal Maiden. So if you get, like, a Veno or something, you just toss uh, the Crystal on the Veno. Or toss the Crystal on the Viper. Or something else with massive flows, and you just demolish him. DP is also not that bad. Look, it's a little bit dangerous what X3 is going to build, choose, go for. I do know that mid laner loves playing Coddle, but I don't think you want to play Coddle against Storm. Life Stealer. We saw that one yesterday. It actually destroyed in its game. The Life Stealer is always okay. It's not necessarily a, a counter to the Naga Siren that you'd think of. One, two, three. It's alright, but you probably will need to get yourselves a Mjolnir just to be able to deal with all the illusions. Otherwise, the illusions will roam free. Ten seconds remain. Five seconds. It is Dyer's ban. Also a hero that doesn't like Orchid that much. So that could be an item of choice here for the Storm Spirit. An early one. Same with the Silence of Ulti being a nasty one for the Life Seal to deal with. Because you can't rage when you're silenced. And then you are sitting down. Ten seconds. Lane wise, it does survive against the tiny. But they can pick up a, a number of heroes that really destroy the uh, life stealer as an off lane hero. But it Please seems X3 are expecting this to be a Naga support, maybe? Or Naga off lane? With that slug band. Smiling Ten likes a safe laner for one move still, right? I think he plays Naga. Five seconds remain. Zeus and Ember both banned out. Dyer's turn to pick. Or are they going to control the storm? Because their control is very lackluster. Radiant's turn. Okay, it is a Tide, as expected. Naga safe. Tide off lane, Tiny 4. Tide against Life Stealer. Orb of Corrosion is pretty annoying, but you don't really care that much about the Crystal Maiden. You also do have minus armor with the Naga on your team, so Roshan is pretty doable for one move because of it. You got Global Silence and uh, Ravage, so that combo is nasty. Yeah, I like, I like the Tide. Especially against the um, reasonably squishy enemy lineup. And the last pick for X3 will be the mid Lena. Or Natty Narwhal. Okay. Lena is a hero that does uh, okay against nearly every other hero. Because Storm Spirit's attack range, I think, is like 400. I don't necessarily know at the top of my head. But it's not great compared to Lena. So Lena should win the lane. Um. Lena is not the greatest to deal with Naga illusions, but in the late game, Lena can absolutely shred through everything on the one move side. So when you take this game to late game, I think X3 have the advantage because their two cores are just stupid strong late game heroes. Though I think one move because they have global signs, they have Ravage, they have the tiny who can blow up squishy heroes. They have a very solid mid game, but it really depends on... You know, how active Smiling Knight... When Smiling Knight will be active, really. 
Because building up in super tankiness is not going to do much against the Lifestealer. Because he just thrives off of chunking out your HP with his uh, Lifesteal shenanigans. And if it's going to be physical damage, Lena, she shreds. I personally... Uh, actually, I'll check the odds quickly on this like game this before I... Uh, before I do anything. The stalwart hey, thank you very much for the sub, Dark Steel. Five minute delay. Two. I did get my second, uh, my second booster for COVID yesterday, so I am a little bit slightly. Oh, the odds are four point three for X three. I definitely take those odds. Right, they remade the lobby, I guess. The time for preparation is short. Oh, Use they're playing with another. They're playing with BZZ instead of Dark. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back. I'll set everything up.
back, ladies and gents. Silence, I do not feel Tied like. Oh to... my god. Lena. Oh, I kind of feel like Show shit. <laughs> That's the only big Listen downside of the fucking COVID vaccines. Blah. How are you guys doing? We finally are getting ready for game number one. Let's get this show on the road. So, uh, what they did swap out was they swapped out Dark for BZZ on the... Where is he? There we have. BZZ playing 5 position. Valor, also known as N-Rank on the hood. Vink, Nesphere on his life sealer And Shagarat for the offlane brood with interesting starting items. Iron Branch and a Wraith, ba uh, Wraith Band. I guess the extra armor is nice because you're playing against the Naga. And Naga mainly is physical with the uh, Riptide. Actually, Riptide's magical. But it does reduce armor, so I guess, you know, in that, in that sense, it's, it's okay. DK Truman, you weren't that wrong this time around. As you always tend to be. Seconds to this could be a very good bait, having that smoked up Crystal Maiden, the giving them an idea that there might be a ward up there. That went swimmingly. He is staying. Oh, Nazi Narwhal, don't walk in enemy's range. Who will emerge victorious? Three bounties, a 4-1 move, and only the singular one for X3. Oh, they're gonna cut the first creep wave, it seems. Or at least get rid of the range creep immediately. Didn't he just throw that tree so he has a fresh one? And the lane really kind of sort of starts. Well, he does throw out the tree, but now he has to wait uh, 19 seconds for pi before picking up a new one. Mid matchup, Lena versus Storm. Storm, what's his attack range? 480. Lena, 470. Yeah, 670, sorry. That's, uh, that's a little bit more. When I'm looking at the lanes, honestly, in all three lanes, kills can happen. I think top lane, it's... I mean, it's definitely possible because Silencer is a hero that could die pretty easily if you get him uh, bushwhacked onto a tree, slow him down a bit, and send out the Broodmother with uh, the extra uh, Silk and Bola slows. Bottom lane. I guess both the uh, dire heroes. Maybe if they catch up the CM, but Life Stealer should be fine for the most part. Up against two strength heroes, he doesn't mind munching them. He is missing all of his last hits, though. That was uh, slightly unfortunate underneath the tower. <laughs> it's mellow. Mighty, mighty mellow. Oh. Versus Natty. I always like Natty. You play some interesting mid lane heroes. Especially as Kato is great. Bang was also pretty good. Oh, it is going to be first blood on to Panto in the top lane. Okay. First blood secured for X3, net with advantage. Uh, pretty much <coughs> dead even between the two sides. X3's got a bunch of mangoes and wants to continue for Daniel. Speaking of which, Daniel's in trouble. He's not level 2 yet. He's half a level away. X, uh, BZZ should get the slow win. That's for your last right click. Okay, he's getting kited pretty impressively. But it will be in the end the kill secured for Nasphir. Denied. And that's not a bad start. Though the lane is heavily shoved out, which is slightly less fortunate, and Nesphere doesn't have many last hits. Whereas this tide seems to be getting a lot of last hits here. Underneath the tower as well. Or maybe not. I stand corrected. 
Hello, recharge the bottle. Stupendous. Didn't go for the stack at, while at the same time recharging. Slightly disappointed in that one. Could he, if he placed his uh, static ram in there, could it have exploded, pulled them out? Eh, maybe. Radiance Don't play that much, Storm. Killed. Or at all. <laughs> oh, 1k net with lead already for one move. Looks like their lanes are definitely going a little bit better, even though the two kills are in favor of X3. Bottom lane, afterlife dropping very low. They should be able to finish him off. BZC actually doesn't have any mana. Nice avalanche from Daniel, keeping them off of him. And yeah, there's a not a point in Arcane Aura. So without Mangoes, uh, which he just got delivered, BZC doesn't really do that much. And afterlife, if he gets spotted there for half a second, he dies to the Cristanova frostbite. No way. But now he's regened a little bit too much to just get dropped. None of these ugly mags are gonna keep up with us. Sugar's got nine last hits. Oof. The diaglyph is now active. I guess it could be. They're gonna go in on the tide. Kraken shell level two keeps him very much alive. And also the extra armor from the chain mill. Being close to the tower definitely helps. Kill threat on the Crystal Maiden is going to be a lot less though. Slow Daniel does get chunked down by Nesphere and he gets his second kill of the game. Nazi Narwhal is doing a really good job in mid but... No, it's a storm. It, it can recover very easily in the jungle with a couple of decent uh, medium and large camp stacks. The rune spawning bottom is a double damage picked up by BZZ. They're going to go in onto Nati Narwhal, though got to be a little bit careful here because there are C Radiant heroes nearby as well. And there's going to be the kill onto Mello. Nati turning it around and it's going to be just plentiful kills. Nati Narwhal should stay alive as well. And just three kills picked up for X3 and still net worth is favoring one move. But uh, let's check out the net worth chart. Yeah, it's Smiling Knight at the top, but Natty Narwhal, he's just overtaken him. Nesphere is also doing a pretty good job. It's The main difference is the supports at this stage. They do have themselves six kills against zero. This will come in handy. Oof, not a point in rage equals death. It will be Panto dying in return. He does didn't have Claves of Wisdom, otherwise he probably would have gotten the... Ex I think you still get the... Uh, it doesn't matter your range. If you kill someone on Silencer, you get the int steal. Panto double kill, but no permanent. Lord gonna get jumped in mid. Panto gets that silence blast. And Panto is on a killing spree. Big silence to support in game. Does have enough for his mana boot, so he's gonna not have any mana issues going further into the game. Which is huge, because of course silence is ulti 
Global silence costs 300 mana. That's half his mana pool at this stage in one spell. Well, Daniel back to the bottom lane. He is invised up, so looking to get a catch onto Nesphere, who still doesn't have a rage available. He definitely has to be careful of good old classic Ravage shenanigans. There's going to be the Ravage blown toss back, maybe a little bit too early, but the silence actually is going to be huge. Nesphere so close to level 6, but too far away, and it is going to be the kill secured there. Even diving for BZZ underneath the tier 1 tower bottom. There's Nazi Narwhal TPing through though. And Nazi Narwhal, Laguna Blade gets rid of Afterlife, BZZ. Will he be fine? I think he might just tick down. Nah, he should be just fine. Nazi Narwhal is doing, uh, making some very nice rotations this game. While the tier 1 tower top gets secured in the meantime. And he's trying to find Smiling Knight, I guess, in the jungle, but Smiling Knight is just. He's just having fun. He's gonna farm like crazy. Manta, Orchid, first two items. In this matchup a lot. Naga versus Lifesteal. Isn't Naga always win the matchup? I wouldn't say always. The plus side of Naga is that Naga just tends to farm way more and way faster. And the life stealer does, so it gets a little bit uh, skewed in Naga's favor, depending on how the early to mid game goes. But the big plus is that Nati Narwhal is really farmed on the Lina. Lord, gotta be a bit careful. There is an ensnare. Hoodwing should be just fine, though. Actually, while I say that, there is a storm plus a silencer walking in, so maybe he might not be so, so 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 fine. He's probably dead. Sugar needs to be careful that he's not the next one. Yep, that is going to be an easy pick on to Valor. Well, the farming is going pretty okay. Very least. They still need to take out the T1 tower towards the bottom lane to see the items. Okay, Afterlife's just rushing himself a blink dagger, looking for more of the early to mid game fights, which, as mentioned, I think that's kind of their timing. The, the mid game engagements is really favorable for one move. Whereas I think late game against Selena and Life Stealer core, I think you definitely do lose. I mean, it's doable because Storm in the ultra late game with like the Aghanim Scepter and uh, what's it called? Uh, overload attack bounds shenanigans could very well be deadly with the shard, of course, obviously. But you need a lot of farm and time to get to that space. And Lina is pretty nasty before that point. Ooh, Bushwhack not gonna connect. He does keep him stunned. Silencer ulti comes out. Do they have the damage to take down Afterlife? Yeah, they do not. And they will actually use that Silencer ulti to also kill off Nesphere on the side. That is some value from Panto. Saving the tide and keeping the life sphere alive. 
How do you do it? BP in, Valor misses another bushwhack, Avatars, that should be a quick kill on two indeed. Hoodwink being down, BCC. Walking forward will get silenced, pop his ulti. Didn't get silenced? What the fuck did he silence? Okay, that's weird, I thought he... Oh. How does this work? There is little hope for Dyer's middle town. He used his ulti after he got silenced. After he got that debuff on him. And it doesn't cancel it? Or was that like after images or something? I have no idea what happened there. Well, while all of that was going on, of course, Smiling Knight will continued on his farm. Got the Yashas going for the Orchid. And then Heart, because everyone wants a Heart. Quest for ultimate glory continues. The quest for ultimate glory continues. Okay, I'm I I actually came out of bed for this. And I already felt like shit. But I'm like oh no, fuck it. Um I really don't want to end the stream, but I don't feel that good. I am going to need to recuperate. I apologize. Why don't I think about this sort of stuff before I get on? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, there's an official stream. That is, uh... I don't know. Find the official stream. They're Russians, I think. There's also a Brazilian stream. Dota 2 Ruhub is the official stream. Check them out. Um, I'm tapping out. Sorry. I just...